And tonight we don't have any wetlands, so it's good. We should get quick. All right. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, hey, we're on. Okay. Welcome everybody to the CAC meeting, uh, March 5th. Start off with the uh, review of the minutes. I think they're all okay. I read them through. Take a look at them. I don't see any objections to anything. I uh, say we should approve the minutes as written. Vote for that. I, 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 okay. What's this? Good. Thank you. Okay. Now, first order of business is our invasive plant. Now, that list, I want to talk to you down a little bit. I'm putting in the L I I S M A as a site to look at. They have the photos of the plant. Yeah, right? that's what, we discussed that right, yeah, right. briefly. Yeah. I'd recommend that anyway because getting somebody to do all the photos and everything for us is going to be nearly impossible. And they update That's what I mean. It's going to be they impossible. They update it. Waste of money, too. You just have us on our website. We'll just have a, a task you can hit, and that's it. You'll get reckless towards it. Look and we got a lot more in there than just that. I mean, they have very useful information. They have meetings all the time and stuff. So if anybody can make unfortunately, most of the meetings are by one right away. Right. But so that's that's what we're going to do for that. So you'll yeah. put that in on the site here. Don't have to think about it. Well, you can think about it. You can look at it, see what you'd like. It, but, uh, okay. Uh, Roxanne is away. So, and I think she's still holding that article for a while. I haven't talked to her. She's away, I think so. Pesticides, there's a committee that's working on that. That's coming along pretty good. And the main thing is to get uh, awareness of who's spraying puts things on the truck that they're licensed by the camp, by the town so that we can see that they're not just spraying all over the place, which is a good thing. So that's moving along nicely. Okay, Albert, do you have anything for us? Or we just... Um, you got a fifth I member. I don't know. I don't think you have one. <laughs> yeah, we went through pretty quick. If you have anything, and then, uh, okay. right. um, I don't really have much. Good. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a long, long board meeting here today. Um, oh, really? <laughs> at any rate, you know, we want to bring obviously, we want to bring the wetlands applications back to the town board. Um, Hopefully that will get on the agenda soon and push it for it. Mm -hmm. um, I personally would like to see, I see it on the list here, okay. 133, 12 F to put on the uh, wetlands code, that section. I'm just in the near shore over there. Right. It just it doesn't make sense. I, just, I know. Okay. It, but you know, it, it says fall under zoning, but then but they don't want to deal with it. So uh, somehow we have to get it looked at because I feel that the two sections of the code are pretty good, the 129 and 133. But, and there's a reason for it. They, I think they were written at about the same time, originally, 2001 or something. So, uh, you know, they, they near shore overlay peninsula is a huge area of the whole island, you know, around it. And that has- still the beach is all near shore. Yeah, just about, yeah. yeah. And, uh, um, no, you know, uh, 133 just 12F needs to be in the wetlands code. I don't know why it's not, it wasn't. Right. And it wasn't added when we had that planning board edited last year, last spring, they didn't add it. So. It's continually exploited. Yeah. It is. It's not, it's just not just moving it into one time. It's all no, there's more to it. Right. In itself, it's contra it contradictory. Right? It has to be. Yeah. yeah. We totally <clears throat> modify. As a, the lawyer sat down and like going through it and tried to yeah. figure out how to fix it. Yeah. yeah. There's something for him to do. <laughs> I just think they probably have a lot to do. <laughs> it's interesting though, you know, that the two 
coincidentally. My main problem is that, you know, we have uh, things going on in the uh, 129, you know, you're not supposed to do any excavation within 75 foot, and it's being done. <laughs> but the building code allows that. Not, not <laughs> excavation in the 75 foot? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I have to look at that, because the 129 doesn't allow it. If you read 129, you know, you're not get them together. 133 says you can't have any building structures or something systems within the 100 foot landward right. side of the wetlands now. But then it says, it's right, subject it's to 129. Then it takes you to 129. 129 you know, knocks it up. I'm laughing, it's not funny. No, no. But but that was, I think that was written more, more for the septic systems than it was for construction. Because But the DEC just, is at 75 feet. But no septic system could be within 100. So I think that's what we're talking about excavation for septic systems. Uh, I've been looking at like. That's the rationale behind it, better. Right. That's right. right. <laughs> well, no, it is, but it's got to get clarified. But this is building's instruction. Yeah. But that's the rationale. It always says, well, to do with septic system. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's how I always the understood it. The reality is it says building's, building's instruction. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, something has to be done with those two, you know. Right now, you know, it's it's hit and miss on them, and it's not good. I mean, and I think since the uh, DEC hasn't done anything with the uh, flooding F or the FEMA rather hasn't done anything with the FEMA layouts in over ten years, the floods, you know, that they have to come and update them. I mean, they just look at the last year or two that we had, how high the water is coming. So, and those that hasn't been done by. The, you know, Department of Environmental right. Control. And, and that's really, that sets that limit there. I mean, that you don't want to build in that area, you know, it's... Uh... The FEMA is so outdated that the large insurance companies, they have their own plans, they have their own models, because FEMA is clearly not sufficient to predict right. where it's going to hit. Yeah, but that's... It's completely outdated. Unfortunately, that's we have the maps for, let's say, you know, that show that, you know, the FEMA levels. Yeah, but if they are not accurate, then the insurance company doesn't not, follow them. I know. Not worth what? But uh, it's something, I don't know how we can get them updated or ask them to do it. You know, it's, it's money. It's money, it's time, and it's people have to do it. And especially now, I think if we start going over the 129 with that 75 and 100, I think we've got to go to 100 because of the, how the tides are changing so much in the last, if it continues for another year. I mean, I don't know if it's just the last year that it's been bad or, you know, but I think it's going to continue. Yeah. And then, you know, knock out that permitting part you know that you can per if it buy a permit you don't need a permit they just stay out of there you know and it's, it's but you have to have a yes or no kind of thing you can't just have all this yes up yeah. in the air stuff and you know everybody can negotiate and they can you know yeah that's the thing that's a thing and and the thing is that you know like uh, when uh you barely allow a permit or something that's uh, so it's wrong. It's well, when people design things, if they know there's an old, you know, it's possible to get something, they go for it. Yeah, and that's what happens. It's, it's like, you know, it's unfortunate because it's really the code is to protect the people. Right. And and the engineers and the architects, they want to make money. So they it's, all, it's also benefit. to protect the property because the people that are there now are only going to live for another 15 or 20 years. Exactly. And then somebody else has got to deal with it. Yeah, it's so, not their you know, property. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just the, we're just the shareholders for now, you know. That's it. We're just taxpayers, you know. That's right. It. But I mean, you know, it's that's the thing. But it has to be clear. It, it can't just be no, vague, no. and because everybody gets around it, it's just it's easy to do, you know. I've been looking at the Southampton Code and the North Haven, and they, do they have a hundred feet though, or are they at seventy-five? They go a hundred in some areas and seventy-five in others, and. It's, it's it's a it's a mixed code there, but they have their own environmental people. They have right. a, I mean, it's a South Ham. Mm -hmm. I tried to talk a little bit. I'm talking a little bit to Southhold, which is a smaller thing, and I'm interested to ask them what they do at Fishers Island and what they're going to do at Plum Island because that water is 
rising up there. And the only way you can get to Fish's Island is from Connecticut, you know, from that little crazy right. area. I don't know what's going on over there at all, but it's part of South Hole. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, even 100 feet back, if you're still at three foot elevation, it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. So it's all the, you know. Storm. Right. Well, that's. It's different if you've got a, you know, if you're up over, you know, 10 feet and you've got a bulkhead, it's, it's one thing, but it's, you know, when you're. Well, the bulkheads are getting covered, but and down on the west end of Montclair, that property is flooded. I don't know. If they get to the tops of those bulkheads. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's right up to the street down there, you know, right? Right. right. And, and their septic is just flowing right out to the back. Right. Unfortunately, I don't know what what they're going to do. The health department, I guess you could raise it, right, on mounds? Or... Well, the water table so so far pretty much staying there, you know what I mean? But they'll push things around yeah. if it keeps going like that. But we, there's so much fresh water right now, it's just blowing out. I haven't, you haven't been out in the water at all, right? It must be, West Lake Bay must be like <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, down by me, the, the water just comes up and, mm. and it stays. You know, the high tide is very high. Yeah. So I would, that's those two items. That's I think that's important that you brought that up, Albert. That we continue on those. And I, I, like I said last time, we should, as a committee, you should look at these two sections of the code. Mm. And but well, we all know they're screwed up. They need to get fixed. So, but we, yeah, but we can help the lawyer a little bit, give them some guidance. You know, right? Or just you know, this is what we should do to to, to fit, change. Right. To let we, them ponder we that. Make some suggestions like right. that, and right. you can look online. You know, it's very easy today. You go look at Southampton Town Code, and you read that, and, and then you or South Hold. Right. Uh, North Haven, so they all have them. I don't think it depends what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, if if, if the objective is to push it out of 100 feet, yes, I think I can write something like that. But mm -hmm. is that what they want to do? So also interesting, you know, the causeway, it's flooded over a foot, you know, and then we talk about real point. What is it? I mean, is it coming in across the causeway? The no point is going to come exactly. I mean, what are you going to do? Eventually put a bridge there? I don't know. You well, can't they build they, it. They keep building it up, you know? Yeah, they, which they, just makes it worse for the other side of the people that are there. The water right. just level goes up. That's what's happening down in Westmoreland there. Mm. Know, and years and years ago, when Leo Urban was the highway superintendent, they built it up probably at that time a foot or so. And they repaved it. Then they've been repaving it and just yeah, added a few inches every yeah. few years, you know. But it's not going to the only place it really floods now is right where the it, it enters on there, right? Yeah, the rest of it's pretty good. Well, no, up closer to the first portion that goes right across. You mean where you turn on to the? Where you turn on to the first causeway? That's there and further up to the. Further up to yeah. I just, once I see a little, I don't go up there. No, <laughs> it's not I, worth it. I, I, there's no sense taking a chance. It's up there. Uh -huh. I mean, I, you know, it's quite a liability they have there. You know, how are you going to get people off of there? I mean, I know our emergency department will say, yeah, we can get there. But if it takes you five minutes, the person could be mm. expired by then, you know, instead right. of one minute. So. Yeah, but isn't that sort of in true American fashion? That's the flip side of living, having chosen to live in that beautiful spot. There comes yeah, the yeah. cost and liability to that. It's yeah. not that I'm just enjoying the benefits and when it gets difficult, then I'm coming around and say, okay, now help me. Right. It's the causeway to this. If you can only get there by boat, get there by boat or stop going there. Right. Yeah. Everybody's got generators now. They're ready for this stuff. You know, it's and it, it's, it's it's the way it is. So, but but not everybody out there can do that. You know, so well, the majority, right? Yeah, I don't know. There's too many poor people out there on Grand Island. That I know of. And this time of year, there's not many people at all out there. You know. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm just saying we should look at those two sections for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there has to probably be a possibility for permitting in a situation where someone has a house that penetrates into the 100 feet. And if they want to do some renovation within the footprint, there should possibly be exactly a way to 
not let them be stuck with that house, but anything that's new construction, anything that's expansion, you can go that way. Well, that if way we, you don't. Yeah, if you're going to tear a, sub, a structure down, then you should conform to all the regulations. It should be that simple. If, that, yeah. if that's what you've decided to do, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, I mean, like that one in Ram Island, uh, that, you know, they got 500 feet from the road to the water. Why are they, you know, out there with the garbage cans and the parking? And the yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. But it's, you know, it's allowed. So, it's... it's you know, it should be written so that if there's no alternative, then it's a consideration. But when you have an alternative, then it, it should be. Well, Except the way they look at the alternative is our, there's no alternative to our plan. Right. It's not that yeah, a different yeah. plan would be the alternative. Right, right. It's a very twisted way of yeah, looking yeah. at it, but. Yeah. That's well, why it's got to get fixed. You know, we should look well, it's at like, it. You know, Howie as a committee write a letter. Yeah. Or make a presentation to the town board if, if you, you feel you see holes like this. Yeah. I mean, I, you call attention to it. Mm -hmm. well, it's only going to help. People do understand yes and no, but maybe is a whole different concept. You know, maybe is a that's pretty broad. And I no, think, nobody likes to hear. <laughs> no, I know they don't, but I'm just saying if that's that. the way it is, that's the way it is. But if it's a maybe, then anything can happen. You know, if you've got enough time and. Uh, and you always get, oh, the precedent is set, you know, but... Oh, right. That's all part of the maybe stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I think we, we should write the code that's... We, we'll make a suggestion. We'll write something. Yeah, like write that. something that you think is, you know, that we, you know, we think is right, and then think of that we're, we're, else we're crazy or not. I'll bring that... At, at a work session. Yeah. Just put something together and deliver it at a work right. session. Right, yeah. yeah. I'll bring you know, something that's, next week. That's, Meeting. It's helpful. Yes, of course. You don't want to say, oh, it's no good, and don't make a suggestion. That doesn't help. we got to have a suggestion, and maybe your suggestion is good or it's not. It's right. not standing on it. Much help. Much help as we can give. You know, lots it just adds to the amount of conversation about a given subject. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a positive thing. Yeah. Yes. With a comprehensive plan starting, I don't know how sustainable our island is, you know, if we're going to get more people here. Right now, we've got plenty of water. But, mm. but certain areas, like down in Montclair, they don't have water. I mean, it's all run. Because I treat the aquifer like a sponge, you know, and once it gets sponged with salt water, it's very hard to get that out of there. Well, you know? if you don't put the fresh water back, the soil comes in. That's, yeah. you know, that's what it is. So, and they don't really have any drainage down there. The old Montclair Colony, there's no. nothing. It all runs over for it. Yeah. So yeah. That, should, that should be something they should work on. Well, the sides, you know, Dickerson Park, that's the only fresh water down there, right? Right. That right. There's no other ponds. No. Everything else been, has been trenched out into salt. Right. Yeah. Right. There used to be other fresh ponds down there. Yeah, you know, and they cut them all for mosquitoes, but right. So those probably helped at one time soak up more fresh water. Yeah, and hold it. Yeah, even a you know a long low meadow that the water runs into. That's the best way to go anyway. Yeah, right? yeah. It slowly it down. Slowly yeah. and it filters everything out. You don't have to maintain anything. You know. So well, we got that white property down there now. That will help us. So absorb it. Be absorb. Yeah. Okay, now let's see. What the next thing we have is uh, uh, old business. Now, the nature preserve business. I went to all of them and uh, I made some comments on them. I don't know how many people got a chance to go to them, but I'll just go through my comments and I'm going back to them because there's some strange things that I've seen in uh, Sachem's Woods, which is the town is looking to put affordable housing on that one plot there. What's that, the one, the one, one acre pot by Marcello? Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, John, uh, I can't see you adding nitrates to, you know, put a septic in, it'll cut it down, but you're still adding it right into a, if it, but that's, that's not even under consideration right now. That's something in the future. That's business property too, isn't it? I think it is. I don't know. Yeah. It must be all those lots. Yeah. Houses, right? Yeah. And, and, and maybe Islanders there. And all that. Right. Right. Well, 
First one I have, by the way, is Sachin's Woods that I went through, and I put that. Uh, here's what I found just walking through. There's tires on the south side of it. There's um, oil drums on the south side of the plot there. And then what, what I'm talking about now is there's an open drain pit just west of Island Inn property. And that appears to be coming from Jasper Street. It's an open drain. I mean, there's a big pipe coming. I don't know what it was for. Well, probably the state. Like they drain, you're talking it's, about? It's 50 feet into the Sachem's Wood store. Mm. Oh, yeah? There. And I, I, I walk, and if you walk along the back of like the island, and, you, and you'll see it's an open box there. Somebody opened it up. When you say the island, you're talking about the, the islander? The island. Yeah, right. Yeah, sorry. yeah but that's, do they, do they pour now? There's moscas after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because in the state, you know, we're, we're Christians, they drain all the water down into there, and there's another yeah, pipe that goes. His, there's another pipe to the other side, the other yeah. side. That's, that's clogged, so it's all going to his side. Yep. And they fill, the, the people at the uh, IGA fill, so it can't go through there anymore. Yeah, that whole area in, yeah. Now, who owns that property right there between Mosca and, and the IGA? Is that the state or is that it's IGA? The town. The town owns that? A little piece that piece. little sliver there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A one acre piece. It's town property, so. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Between uh, IGA and and. Mosque, I think, right? Yeah. The IGA owns it. You think they own all that? They start. They, they put a no dumping idea about yeah. housing in there some years ago. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was in the back, but. In the back. Yeah. Yeah. But that little it, piece of woods is just like filled with garbage and. Yeah, everything. And yeah. That's why I figured the state was part of that because yeah, it's right opposite from your brother's. There, building. there is a new big building in the back there, as you know. Yeah, well, that's. There's yeah. a building going on to the house that is there now. Right, right. I don't know what for or what you know. But, yeah, um, yeah, that's probably Teodora's uh, like shops and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. But this is this is downhill from that. This is in a swale there. But this is a big. I mean, it's an eight-inch pipe at least going in, and it's coming from Jasper. You know, you can. It's open. You look and say, well, "What the heck is it coming from there?" From? Yeah. Who knows what they did back then? Yeah, you don't know what it is, but I guess maybe the uh, building department might have some records of that. I don't know. The highway department. Somebody, but we can't really have that go through private property either, you know. No, it could be from if it's not state owned or right away, it could just have a drainage pipe running through somebody's yard. Yeah, it would have to go no. from a road, you know. Yeah, it, uh, it, somebody, somebody set their hand up over here. Oh, yes, yeah. Hi, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, hi, good evening. My name is uh, Sean Davey. Many of you uh, may not know me. A um, couple of uh, things, if I may. Um, yeah. One, I completely applaud some of the comments that have come out about putting stuff in front of the town board. Uh, all of my comments are completely made with respect for all the work you guys do, but it seems to me that the town board is waiting for somebody to put in front of them very specific suggestions about what to do to change the wetlands code and make it rectified. And the gentleman with the accent said, hey, I'll do something, I'll write it up, I'll put it in front of them next week. I didn't say next week. <laughs> well, I, well, all I can tell you is that if nothing, we've been discussing this for months and months and months and somebody has to put something down on paper and get it front of the town board so that they have the urgency to act. I don't know where the intellectual capital comes from. If not, that you guys take the outline and do it. I'm happy to help, for example, but I'm a little dismayed that we spent the first 20 minutes and then we've moved on, whereas this is, seems to be one of the biggest urgency items and no one is saying, I am saying we're going to create an outline of the changes that we need. We're going to get it by this date in front of the town board, and we're going to make them react. And that's why, in my opinion, again, with all due respect, because you're all volunteers, and I completely appreciate the hard work that you do, but if you, if you in your position who seem to be knowing the best aren't putting something very specific in front of the town board to make them react and move, then I don't know what is going to change about the wetlands code. I think we started discussing this 
before last summer. And I haven't seen anybody put anything on paper to actually make a change. So we debate and debate and debate. And now we're debating who should handle permits. And I think we could have actually changed code by now. So right. I'm happy to help. Uh, I'm, I actually ran, was one of the 11 rejects running for town board. I am a resource. I am happy to dig in. I do not know what you know about uh, the town code or about it. I'd sit down with any one of you and I will take my pen to paper. But if people don't start putting stuff in front of the town board to make them address it, we're going to have these same conversations. You guys only meet once a month. You'll be discussing it in July and the town board will never move to actually make a change. If I can be instrumental, I'll help. I am just encouraging you. It's about drafting and putting it in because I don't see the people in the town board drafting it themselves. Okay, Sean, I appreciate that. Uh, maybe you could send me uh, uh, a copy of what yours or an outline that you're considering. I, I, don't know well enough, I don't know honestly well enough about it, but I'd sit down with you for two hours and I will sketch an outline of all the things that you guys are talking about. Somebody mm -hmm. just needs to take what you have, you are saying, hey, this needs to coincide with this. Title X needs to go with that. Put it on paper, get it in front of the town board and say, why not do this? Mm -hmm. um, I, I will send you my email. I'm happy to sit down with any Appreciate number. That. You're always you're clearly already devoting your time, but until somebody puts stuff down on paper that can be reacted to, it's all going to be sound bites and people are going to go in circles. And I think that's the problem where we're finding in many of our code changes is that people are not putting stuff down on paper and saying react, good, bad, like let's have tangible conversation. I will send, I am more than happy to, I will send you my email. I will happy to be a resource. I'll sit down with any one of you. Uh, I've sat down with Dan before separately on tree issues. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, I am happy to help. I just think what you started to bite at of, we should put something in front of the town board. I'll start to draft it. That's where the tangible stuff is. And if we don't do that and it takes three months, then we're, we deserve that we're still going to be sitting in the same position discussing somebody else, you know, screwing up with the wetlands. I, and again, respectfully submitted. I appreciate all you do. I, I just think we're in a different world that if until we start to put tangible stuff down rather than discuss, then the town board can't be challenged to actually react. I agree with you. Send me an email and we'll get together. And, and I will vouch for Sean. He's a very hard worker. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. He's yeah. a go-getter for short. That's good. That's good. That's what we need. I, I appreciate your indulgence. It's made with all good intent because I just think we need to start to make things happen. And I'm happy to be part of that process. To make things happen. Yeah, yeah let's do it. we got to make things happen. I mean, we can see that, Sean. It's What's three going kind of on in the world? Those that yeah. make things happen, those that watch things happen, Thank those that wonder what happened. Thank you. Yep. Have a great night. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's very helpful. That's great. Um, the next thing I had uh, with, with uh, Satan's Woods is a drain pipe coming from uh, Marcello's property. Open drain pipe coming. I don't know what it's from. I hope it's just from the parking lot. And I think it is. There's nothing below that. But it shouldn't be draining into Sachin's Woods. That's a, a nature preserve. I mean, maybe it should, it's got to go someplace else. So. And you can walk that back strip there, like 50 feet behind the property lines, and you see that. it's it's. So I did that, and I don't know if anybody else has been able to get in there yet, but maybe by the next meeting we can add to that. So the next property is Ice Pond that I walked around, and that looks in pretty good condition. I mean, and I know the town is contemplating getting a path across so that they don't go on New York Avenue, break that congestion for the bicyclists and stuff. So. All right. That's something we should look at, but actually the path around Ice Pond is clear and you can walk around. I mean, there's trees down towards Westneck 
but that's just part of nature. They sit there, rot the bugs, eat them, and stuff like that. So nobody's really hiking in there. So I think that's in pretty good condition. I went up to Garcia, and it's very hard to find. There's no property boundary markers that I could find there. It's a, you know, you just look and that's it. There's some leaves in there and stuff, but it backs up against the, the Conic Landing Trust on the other road. And I think we just leave it the way it is. I mean, there's plenty of space we have around the other parts of the island. And just so we know where it is, I mean, if we start to get a lot of invasive plants that we can have the town clear that out. I mean, we used to have the volunteers, you know, the vine buses and stuff, but we don't have that anymore. Yeah. People not volunteering the way they used to. So, so that's the one. For, and then I have Shell Beach. There's excess, I have an excessive erosion along the east and west side of the road, right down where that uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, pipe and clovers marked off there. It's quite excessive. I don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, and like I was saying, this is going to be, I mean, it's the whole East Coast. I mean, Fire Island, all of it. They can't just be pumping it back up in. It's not going to last. It's, right. it's, it's, it's something. So I don't know what to do about that. No. Well, you got to catch it and hold it. And then, it, you know, it's, it's constantly changing Southwest, Northwest. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just going to keep eating it out unless you, you know, you got to have something you can pick up and move and you just trap the sand and you hold it for the next week and you, you build it back up. Because down even by me on the east side of, of Montclair, that we have a sand bank there that just build, I mean, it's building several feet a month. Right. It's not just slow. It's all coming from the, from the south side of Montclair there. Right. coming around and I think it's coming off of Shell Beach too but I I don't know I'm not a hydrolysis it's a yeah. geotech person so the thing is nobody wants to do anything that's temporary like if, right. I, if you take something temporary and move, you know then that's a problem they want to build permanent stuff yeah so but the temporary is actually better because you can you can move it around and you can you know uh, I think you know the wind uh the change of the wind that's what you have to work with yeah, I, mean, I, I think we're going to have a lot of that erosion on the island, not just us, but you know, South Hold and, and they had a lot of groins in the old days along Shell Beach, so it it held it pretty good. Yeah, but that part it's missed. That's it's gone so they got to be low it's enough. A long that it, it goes over and holds. Mm -hmm. and holds. You yeah. know, you can't have tall ones that it just scallops out. But. There's a whole science to that stuff, but nobody ever pays attention to it. <laughs> it seems like I don't know. it seems well. You know, I don't know how it's basically the core of engineers, but I don't know how much it is like the DEC. How much do they have the manpower to do it? Well, even that, it's like, you know, nobody can agree on how to do it. Correct way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know how many of those piers there were? There was quite a few. They were like every hundred feet or so. Yeah. I can definitely remember like little pieces of falling down you know, right. when I was a kid, but yeah. you know, really how many yeah. actually I mean, had half, half back there. in the day built a whole lot out there. But then they just, once they fell apart and they wouldn't get permits to do them again for whatever reason, and then that was it. A lot of times people write textbooks with the wrong information and everybody learns that. And that's the new way. No, really. And that's the way everybody learns and they think, well, that can't work. Right. And it always has, but since it is in the book, that's right. it. That's it. You know? That's true. What's the situation with the, um, I can't think of the name right now, but the pond that they wanted to oh, drain or whatever. Fresh pond? Yeah, yeah. Peter Grant? Yeah. I thought I saw they're trying, the grant wasn't, they didn't give them the grant to do the work. So okay. I, I don't think they got it. There was a big thing about that for a while. You know. They didn't get the grant. Right. Sure. And they're applying again. They're applying again. Oh, right. okay. Uh, how much was it to do the work? Well, the estimate. <laughs> was a million dollars. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Mm. Eight to ten year project. Oh. Right? You know, kind of a flushing. Oh my God. Extracting of the phosphorus. Right. right. And the pump. Yeah. A lot of money. A lot yeah. of money. Yeah. Because yeah. I know there's a lot of controversy over that. I have a friend and I got the information from her, and it's, you know, some people are pro and some, of course, are not. Mm -hmm. And it's going nowhere, I guess. 
Mm -hmm. The only ones that have a grant for this flooding is, is the North Ferry got a, a grant for, I think, 135000 to study the flooding now that they raised the, the doctrine. So they have a grant, maybe something come out, they'll say something about what they can do, I don't know. But they got to get an engineer to study it. I mean, you get a grant, well, you I mean, for, make people. I guess all the grants with all the studies, and then when it comes to doing something, there's never anybody yeah, to do yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true, too. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. And then the next place I went to was Wade's Beach, and that, that looks pretty good. The only thing that I saw there that the the uh, grass growing, the beach grass, has openings in it, either from people running over it, well, especially from the parking lot. People don't walk walk around, so they walk over the grass. It might be the kids or something. But I think we have to have the town. Uh, replenish those grasses and, and also just, further where the boat storage is further out. Uh, right. So, but otherwise the beach looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. You could just put some low, um, you know, that like the snow fence, but not three foot, but it's like the half. And that just give them a place to know that they're not supposed to walk in there. Yeah. That with the sand would blow up and build up in there too. Right. That might help. Yeah. Yeah, because the beach, that beach grass spreads pretty quickly. It so does. If somebody stop yeah, walking on there, it will. Yeah, it'll come right back. Come right back. Yeah, because there's several gaps in it right now. Right, it's right. Helpful. Yeah. With the high tides that we're getting. So, but everybody should go down here, take a look, maybe walk it. Yeah, it's just in the better nice weather or something. You know, <laughs> not this week, but next week maybe it'll be warm or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the last place I walked was Dickerson Park, and uh, I talked to um, the uh, highway department. Brian was there about that shed that's falling down in the front, mm -hmm. that one yeah, garage, yeah. That, that garden club shed. But it's, 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 it looks like it's beyond repair. He was thinking maybe we could have uh, the school or somebody use it for something. It. And, yeah, they should, yeah. should use it. Storage even or something. You but know. now the roof is going yeah. forth down. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a, a terrible shape. It's an eyesore to the park, really. Yeah. You know, it be pushed down, probably. <laughs> well, you know. it might be able to be Unless salvaged. You can restore it. I, I mean, mean, they you know. salvaged the, the garage in the back. They put the buoys there, mm -hmm. the markings and everything. They used that. So yeah. maybe it's up to, mm -hmm. I guess well, I should speak. Well, who really actually is responsible for that or owns it? I know the Garden Club has that, used it, you well, know. And, that's town preserved property. It's the town. Yeah. So, so they gave permission to the Garden Club to use it? Yeah. Is that what happened? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Garden Club was very influential. They were around the back at this some park. They had marked the trees, the, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. They, they were very yeah. I was a member um, for a long, long time, resigned, but I think I'm going to re, 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 re not resign, sign back on. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything, but uh, that's going to be required by the uh, town, you know, mm -hmm. highway department to take care of that. They use that property now. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't think we want to put it back the way it was. I mean, it was beautiful there with the dock and so much. Uh, then there was. Um, there's a lot of invasive brush around the pond that should be cleared out. It's a big job though, I don't know, but it's just some, something that we should suggest. And then clearly mark on the north side of the, of the property that goes out to Dickerson Drive, there's a narrow strip. And it looks like the property to the north has been clearing land. And I don't know where it ends on that, Town preserved property that goes through from Dickerson over to Dickerson. How many acres are there altogether? It's somewhere there. It's quite a bit. Yeah, it's quite a bit, yeah. It's like four or so. I guess. It's, 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 and it's right by uh, one well there that we have on, on Anantic. So we should make sure we keep that some pest wells that they have. So by next week, if it's our next meeting, rather, if everybody to walk it and come up with some ideas, we'll put it together and then we submit it to the town board and they'll react or don't react or 
Yeah, I think Shell Beach, I was down there. I think just the sides of the road should be mowed. There's a lot of, you know, invasives growing in and that long yeah. grass, especially with people in the summertime, it's going to be a tick infested area for yeah, a lot of people sure. visiting the beach down there. So to just mow the edges of the road would be my suggestion. Cut it short. So yeah, as long as it doesn't, I've heard of preserving the, the it's center. not really so if you just mow that it's all invasives really it's all bittersweet and yeah. you know nothing mm -hmm. good is growing up there a lot of locusts black locusts mm -hmm. um, Put it down there, but I have it anyway. all the beach plums down there have tons of bittersweet on them yeah yeah so they should be cleared out if we wanted to do volunteer work that would be a good I wonder the next time they dredge, they could, you know, put it where it's really eroding out instead of, you know, where they usually dump all the spoils. On the end. Well, yeah, at the end where the, where the road's coming through, try to replenish that. I don't know how much dredging is programmed into that. I mean, I know they want to take out. When I, they, there's a lot that comes out whenever they do it. But that depends on where it's coming from. You know, if it comes out on Manantic Creek there, that's muck. Oh yeah, but I'm saying when they do the, you know, round shell beach, they do right, the, just pump it back up, up the yeah. island boat yard, but just go further, you know, dump it by the road where there, there's not much left. Right, right. instead of on the point. Yeah, so it seems like on the point there just keeps coming around and back in. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's going, but it's a, it's a point we have to look at. So, so grass. Because it never used to be that narrow ever. No. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's right on either side of the road there now. It was always like fifty feet of beach there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So it's I mean, the short time I've been here. Yeah, it's a non wider. Yeah. All right. So by next meeting, if you know, you fellas go around, ladies go around, and take a look at those, and just you know, either make a comment or whatever we can do. And I appreciate mm -hmm. that. So give it to the town. After the next meeting, we'll write it up and give it to the town. Um, <clears throat> the last thing is well, that lighting, chapter 83, which is, has been in the code for a while, and it deals mainly with quality lighting. It's how to do proper lighting. And I was a member of IES, the Community Engineer Society, too some experience in that uh, and what it is is cut off so you can't see the lamp and, it, and the light hits the ground and it's it's not only not annoying to a person looking at it but it's for older people or bad eyes it's glare when they're driving and it's not it's not safe it could cause problems so we should take a look at that section of code. I have, gave everybody a copy of it so we can look at that. Mm -hmm. Because it's very hard the way it's written. I read it, it's very hard to enforce. And if you have a code that's difficult to enforce, like the wet length and stuff like that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a problem that we have to solve. And this is one of them. I mean, that the only people, I mean, to see dark sky lighting. The, the town uh, building department closed at five o'clock or so, you know, so they're not going to go around and see it. But in the code, it was smart enough to put in that the police department, so you can complain to the police department if you see lights on. Now, I have uh, lighting around my house that is motion detected. And uh, it's a problem because the deal deer come around and the rabbits run around and the lights go on yeah. and for five or ten minutes so the lights still on you know yeah. so, <laughs> and uh, i can see it annoying people i know you work you yeah so our our neighborhood is lit up like the city <laughs> it's a shame i mean it's ridiculous um, yeah, i don't know if you remember but right there right yeah that's been an eye start the automatic light school whole thing on that to... and, um, we really worked on it and we did it now there's some construction lighting, going on. the lights that came come on i'm sure that the owner is there but whoever works there they there just the leave the lights because like construction nobody knows usually leave the lights on i've never understood why yeah, that yeah. is but 
<laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. And you know, it, it's, you, you can't really, you know, you go to the store and you see these nice, oh, that's a beautiful fixture, you know, but they don't, you don't realize what it does to your neighborhood and it to, to the animals, you know, the owls, the bats and everything that we have. And then the bats are, Saving. Well, you could probably get a lot more mosquitoes attracted with the open lights too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. Yeah. And uh, lights on. And I looked at the uh, dark sky, the lighting in in Southampton. What they do is they have you know a certain hour the lights should be off, mm -hmm. and just for security, come on around the driveway or something like that. But the proper lighting, right? You know, not it should all be not seeable from the property. So well, I believe we have it in our code because, as I say, my husband and I started a whole thing yeah, against in the that. Code, but you know, we had the section there. But you have to take a look it. at it. You know, I must say the lighting is better though. You don't see half as much of the lights that go on automatically. Right. It's in my neighborhood. A lot of people have cut that out. Well, that's good. Thank goodness. <laughs> While I'm thinking about it, we're in Highbury Lane. Yes. Where that water's going through right now, and how that's where it always really wants to go. Oh, that's yes. the that's the spot. Um, yeah. You know, run out that. But, well, that's where nature wants to go, right out there. We always keep messing with it. Yeah. That's the spot it really wants to go out. So. Where I live, yeah, as you know. If they could, yeah, if they could try to continue yeah. with that rather than messing with it, you know, yeah. that would probably last a lot longer. Um, it's flowing pretty good now, right? Um. Yes. It's. It's. Yeah. It's. It's done something rather unusual. Of, um, there's the meat, beach has changed. There's not as much beach as there used to be. Right. Um, and um, I, I go down and look at it every day usually, but um, there has been a change there. And, um, That's because of the way it's going out, running out there. Yeah. I mean, and it, it is running out. No, no, no. Yeah, it's, uh, it's part of what's happening. The, the high tide's coming up. Yeah. It's going to continue happening. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that sand flat out to the east is getting bigger. Yeah, you know, going towards Bud Light that way. Right, yeah. right. If that beach is going, maybe it's all going oh, out yeah. that way because that's yeah. all very shallow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's a lot to consider there. Uh, those areas. Well, Pipe would definitely help that. They went out that, mm -hmm. that end, yeah. the other end. That would take care of it. But so it is deep. Yeah. Like, right where that flows out, it's right. very deep. Yeah. That would be the way to fix it, but well, right now, because of all the rain, we're pretty stable, but we have a lot of subsidence going on on the island. And the island is sinking, and the water's coming up, you know. It's, it's, oh, you think so? The night around sinking? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can look at my yard, and I can see in the 30 years that I've been there, the roots are you know, quite exposed from the trees because the sand is just sipping, seeping out underneath. And that happens when the soil dries out. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to happen now because the soil is very wet and that holds up the structure. Right. And that supports it. But if it goes out, you know, if we have a, a dry spell, you'll see these, maybe some of these new buildings are building all over, start to sink in, <laughs> unfortunately. But no, that's another problem. We look at when that happens, but I go through this one. We can make suggestions and maybe John baby can take a look at that one. But uh, let's worry. The main thing is 133 and 129. If we can just give some suggestion, write it up and give it to the town. Now, is there any way to get that as a Word document? As a Word document? Yeah, I think you can get it right off the uh, site of the town. No, it won't come down. You can print it off the site, but I don't, I, I didn't, actually, I didn't try to save it as a word, but I don't think I try that. I no, whether one can download it as a word document. Catherine, do you know if you can do that? You can definitely you can copy and paste it into a word document, but you can't save it. Right? Yeah, copy and paste it into it. You might want to maybe, uh, Christina would know, right? Maybe. Or, not. Yeah, or, or, or uh, Kevin. Kevin would know. Yeah. Right. Maybe we could ask him. Close but that makes it easier. 
Then we oh, can yeah. actually do, and then you can mark it up and nicely. Yeah. And, and just check with the town, I think. Mm -hmm. we'll call them tomorrow and tell them what we want to do. You know, we want to get those sections down. We want to be able to work on them. All right. Let's see what else we have coming now. Let's see. So we have, yeah. That's it. I think we have plenty of new business to take care of. So but in the next meeting, it's going to come up quick. Now, um, I'm not available in May. So I'm away for 10 days. So uh, I don't know if we're going to have a meeting or cancel if somebody would like to take over for that one meeting. I'm not, I'm not uh, the April meeting I will make. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's the next meeting. If you can write something up and just email us. That'd be yeah, great. that's okay. I just don't, I'm no. not going to feel like camera that day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, everybody misses a meeting every once in a while. Because yeah. playing forgot the last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do. It's an old thing. I try to call and read emails and stuff. And, Catherine is always very good at saying, please RSVP, and I know Dan does. And so right, right. We have, to, we have to try to get that because it's an important meeting. It's only once a month and mm -hmm. we lose it. So maybe think about who could be like a chairman for that one meeting. Do, do, what are you saying? I won't be here right. any chance for somebody to lead it. Yeah. I'll, I'll write up the agenda and everything, get it all set up, but I would be here to lead that meeting. So. I hate to cancel, but so we, we don't need that. No. <laughs> Albert, how is the town doing on getting us our seventh member? How the what? I'm sorry. How is the town doing getting a committee member for us with our seventh I don't know. Let me ask. How would I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe your brother. You know, your brother, he'd be good at that. He's got the plants. <laughs> see, <laughs> see what he wants. Yeah. <laughs> He's a little busy. <laughs> no, he's very, especially now, he's going to be very busy. They put ads in the paper, obviously. I know. The clerk's office. But, you know, you probably talked about it. The best source is you folks. Right. You know you somebody. Know, try to talk to somebody that you know is interested and could join. Yeah. Want that's, to be there. That's like Roxanne and me. I, I told her about it. And she was very interested. And that's yes. how she's here. Yeah, we're neighbors, and I brought it up. Can I have a hand up? Um, yeah, we've posted it uh, several times, and we just haven't oh, yeah. heard me out. So please, like, beat the bushes. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, it, it, it is the best source of uh, right. camaraderie. Yeah. It's people you know or people you see. Right, right, and people you know, you know are interested in it. And, yeah, that are interested or Right. <clears throat> I'll try to get, you know, through the Shelter Island Association, maybe we'll get some neighborhood association. Yeah, I was just thinking that. You know, we, we have the meetings coming up, each one of us association in the summer. And if we just ask around, maybe we get somebody. Yeah. I mean, the problem is it has to be a yearly thing because we have to have a live quorum to have our meeting. It's not by Zoom. They can, people can listen to it by Zoom, but they cannot vote. They suggest things, but they can't have a vote. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if there's nothing else, I take a motion that we adjourn. Okay. Thank you very much. this to Roxanne. Yeah, take that one to Roxanne. Anybody hope we get some dry weather? Yeah. How is the how